telling you that winning will be easy. It's going to take a lot of work. I want to make sure I'm out there um, making life better uh, for North Carolinians. Candidates have worked hard for months to get your vote to make a difference on the hot topics across our state and our nation. The decisions you make over the next two to three years are going to determine the fate of this country. The decisions on issues like the economy and abortion are bringing out voters of all ages. We need our gas prices down. We need our grocery prices down. I've never voted before and I see this as like my voice. We're the generation that gets to kind of make a difference. Your voice could be making a difference tonight. The midterms 2022 on your local election headquarters starts right now. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for your news at 11. I'm Ken Watlington. And I'm Angie Casada. We have you covered when it comes to tonight's results. Our team of reporters are all across the East to cover all the races that matter the most to you. Of course, we'll get to each of them in just a moment, but we begin with the highly contested race for the state's open U.S. Senate seat. Democrat Sherry Beasley and Republican Ted Budd battling it out to the very end tonight. Let's take a look at the latest results as of this moment. It's been a tight one. Budd leading Beasley right now 51 to 47 percent with about 95 percent of the vote in statewide. We will have more on this race and reaction from the candidates and their camps coming up in just a few minutes. Moving closer to home now, there will be a new representative for U.S. House District 1. The current representative, G.K. Butterfield, is retiring. It looks like Don Davis is the winner and will take over for Butterfield in Congress. Snyder, your side's Erin Jenkins has been following both candidates all day long. She caught up with the winner and joins us now live at Davis's watch party in Greene County. Erin. Yeah, kid, we are here actually with newly elected Congressman Don Davis. Congressman Davis, how does that sound? Well, I'll put it this way. I'm excited. Um, so many have worked hard to get us here. Um, it's time to go to work. Um, so we'll get up tomorrow and, you know, start thinking about how we can now begin to move forward for Eastern North Carolina. Talk a lot about health care and education. What does it mean to be representing your home here in Eastern North Carolina? It means so much to me. Um, I will, I'm a native of Eastern North Carolina. Um, at the same time, we all understand the challenges here. Sometimes we feel that we're left out, we're just forgotten. Um, so for me, um, it's time to go to work to make sure that we're doing everything to bring resources back home to the east. And an exciting night filled with family and friends. Any sleep tonight or what's next? I don't know. After, after this excitement, I'm telling you, the room I was just so excited. A lot of cheering and a lot of applause. I don't know if I'm going to get rest tonight. <laughs> well, congratulations. Thank you so much for your time. And hopefully you get a little bit of sleep tonight. <laughs> well, we do thank all of our supporters. And thank you, Eastern North Carolina. All right. Thank you so much. That's it from Live in Snow Hill. I'm Erin Jenkins, 9 on your side. Erin, thank you. Moving on, our second U.S. U.S. House seat in the East District 3. That's where the incumbent Republican Greg Murphy is going for re-election against Democrat Barbara Gaskins. Murphy winning tonight with 67% of the vote. Not in your side's Claire Curry. She's joining us now live from New Bern where there was a watch party going on for Murphy. Claire. I'm here at Congressman Murphy's watch party, which just wrapped up and a bit ago, we found out that he will be keeping his seat for U.S. District 3 as the, you know, the votes you know, came in and the polls closed. Murphy came out on top with his campaign focused on energy, the economy, and our veterans. He will be staying in D.C. At tonight's watch party, supporters like Craven County Sheriff Chip Hughes and Representative Keith Kidwell gave speeches along with Murphy. He, Murphy says that he plans to stay connected with people here in eastern North Carolina, and he thanks everyone who put their names on the ballots and the people who went out and cast their votes today. Live in New Bern, Claire Curry, 9 on your side. Claire, thank you. We have several races for state house seats in Raleigh to talk about. Here in Pitt County, the District 9 incumbent Democrat Brian Farkas taking on Republican challenger Timothy Reeder and Farkas will lose his bid for re-election. Take a look at the numbers tonight. Reader with 51% of the vote, all 100% of the precincts reporting. Now to your side, Sarah Gray Barr joins us now from the WNCT newsroom tonight with more on what's been a really tight race. 
Yeah, Ken, all 18 precincts have reported and pending certification of results. Tim Reeder won the seat for District 9 in the House of Representatives in North Carolina with 50.78% of the vote. To put that in perspective, that is a lead by 1.56% of the vote. I've already spoken to Reeder about this victory. He told me he looks forward to getting to work serving the folks of District 9. I'm going to find my office, get some staff, and then we're going to start working on the economy, work on creating jobs, working on improving the, the state for the citizens of Pitt County. This will be Reader's first term in the North Carolina House of Representatives. In the newsroom, Sarah Gray Barr, nine on your side. All right, Sarah Gray, thank you. And taking a look at other local races from NC House in District 8, which covers the northern portion of Pitt County, Democrat Glorstein Brown taking more than 50% of the vote. 100% of the vote is in there. To the state Senate now, District 5 covers Greenville up towards Rocky Mound. And right now, Democrat Candy Smith holding on to the lead with 52% of the vote over Republican challenger Karen Kozel. Down in Onzo County, there is a heated race for District 15's seat in the state house. That's between the incumbent Republican Phil Shepard and Democrat Chris Schulte. Shepard with the win over Democrat Chris Schulte, more than 60% going to Shepard. We actually have nine on your side, Cheyenne Pagan, joining us now from our Jacksonville studio. And she caught up with both candidates tonight. So, Cheyenne, what can you tell us? I did stop by both of the watch parties for the candidates and they both say they're grateful for everyone who went out and cast their ballot today and they also say they're grateful for the chance to have run in this race. Today every vote counts and that's certainly the message you can take away from the election. Earlier today when I spoke with Shepard, he told me some of the things he wants to accomplish after his reelection. He said he wants to continue helping the state and county grow economically. And now with this win, he told me he hopes to be able to accomplish just that. that I'm going to be the same person I've always been. My door will always be open to them. A phone call away, any way that I can help them as their representative, I'll be glad to do that because that's what it's all about. It's about the people of the state, the people of Onslow County and District 15. Schulte told me that he's grateful for the support he got in this race and for the large turnout of voters to the polls in this election. Now with this re-election, this will mark over 11 years Shepard has held his position. In our Jacksonville studio, Cheyenne Pagan Nye on your side. Cheyenne, thank you. Tonight isn't just about those House and Senate seats. There are plenty of sheriff positions being decided tonight, and one of them is right here in Pitt County. Let's take a look at the results. The incumbent Paula Dance will win re-election with 55% of the vote tonight over the challenger Gary Weaver. Not on your sides, Adriana Hargrove is live in Greenville tonight with more on Sheriff Dance's big win. How is she feeling? Well, Ken, Sheriff Dance tells me that she has been rehired again to continue her duties as Pitt County Sheriff. Now here at her watch party at the Hilton in Greenville, this is what she had to tell me. I am absolutely ecstatic about this uh, win and this election. Um, we ran a very clean campaign. Um, we felt like this would be the end result. And um, obviously the citizens of Pitt County felt that way too. Of course, they get to hire you and fire you every four years. So I just got a new job again. i um, been rehired and I appreciate that. I appreciate my community. I appreciate the faith and trust that they put in me as a leader. Reporting live in Pitt County, Adriana Hargrove, nine on your side. Adriana, thank you. Beaufort County is also naming a new sheriff tonight to replace outgoing Sheriff Ernie Coleman. Taking a look at the results, Republican Scott Hammond is getting the 10 point win over Democrat Corey Rogerson. And nine on your side at Caitlin Richard. She's live for us tonight in Washington. So, Caitlin, what can you tell us? 
Yeah, Angie, I'm here at the Beaufort County Sheriff's Department where they're now getting a new sheriff, and that sheriff is Scott Hammonds. He was running against Democratic candidate Corey Rogerson, and now that Hammonds is the new sheriff, he tells me that he wants to build trust within the community and be a leading example. Both candidates tell me they just want to thank those supporters that supported them along their campaign journey and for those that showed up to the polls to vote. Live in Beaufort County, Kaylin Richards, 9 on your side. Kaylin, thank you.